What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today we're gonna to talk about some of the things that we expect to see from Apple at WWDC 2021, which is taking place online on June 7th. So whether it's the Mac Mini, as well as the MacBook Pro, and some of the other products that have been rumored from Apple for quite a while now, they've already had a very eventful year, and a lot of it has been M1 focus dating back to last year. As you guys might remember, before the end of the year, they announced the brand new MacBook Air, as well as the MacBook Pro, with the M1 processor along with the M1 Mac Mini and eventually they also announced the Apple AirTags and recently we also saw at the spring event some brand new iPads that have the M1 processor as well as a redesigned iMac in a lot of fun colors. So M1 overall has been a very fast transition for Apple and it's gone very well. There has been no issues in my opinion. The battery life has been great. The performance has been really really good and this is just like Apple scratching the surface. The amount of power that we expect to see with products that are coming out in the future is something to be really Really, really excited about and that is coming from someone who has had Apple's professional lineup as well as their consumer lineup of products and has even switched over to M1 when it comes to professional workflows of video editing in 5k as well as red raw files. So if you guys like to see Apple content and coverage as soon as the products come out just make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and also leave a comment down below as to the product or feature that you're most excited about at this year's Worldwide Developers Conference. So for starters, we saw the iMac redesign for the first time in a very long time. And the biggest thing that we noticed is that Apple is able to make products that feature their own silicon much thinner and much more uniform than before. The iMac 24 inch is a great example because at the size that it is at, it is only about 11 millimeters in thickness and it weighs in at under 10 pounds. And the same chip is found inside the iPad as well. So the MacBook Pro side of things, a redesign has been rumored for quite a while now and it is expected that it's going to have the same type of flat edge that the iPad has and even feel a little bit thinner. So in terms of sizing, we are expecting a 14 and 16 inch model. In late 2019, we saw the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which was pretty much the same form factor as the 15 inch model previously, but the bezels were smaller. So that is going to be the same case of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. It is going to be the same size overall in terms of its footprint, but the bezels are gonna be a little bit thinner. And I feel like 14 inches nowadays is a very popular size because there's a lot of computers on the market on the Windows side that have much smaller bezels and are able to achieve that same form factor. The other change that we're going to see that I would say is pretty big is the removal of the touch bar. And I've got to say Apple has done a really good job of listening to consumers over the past few years and really address some of the things that people like and don't like. And this next MacBook is really going to be an example of that. And it seems like the general consensus is that the touch bar is not exactly popular. There was a whole bunch of promises of like functionalities and different things you could do with it. And although you can do a lot of things with the touch bar, honestly, after switching to the MacBook Air as like a daily computer, I don't miss it at all. And if anything, having physical keys is just something that I'm very used to. And so the next generation MacBook is not going to have that. There's also said to be four USB type C or Thunderbolt ports, as well as a full size HDMI. There's also gonna be MagSafe, which we're very excited for the return of, and also the addition of an SD card slot which is something that is still very commonly used today and was removed for quite a few years. But I think for creatives especially, those two things are going to be major. Honestly though, if you ask me in like 2015 or 16, if Apple was ever going to bring these things back again, I would probably bet on the answer no. But I'm really glad that all these features that I still miss to this day are going to be making a return so the hardware is already something to be really excited about from the outside, but on the inside, there's also gonna be major improvements with the M1X. And that is sort of like the pro model of the M1 processor, but just on paper, and just based on my real world use of the M1 products, the M1X is going to be at another level. It's apparently gonna be a 10 core CPU setup with eight high performance cores and two efficiency cores, and also includes 16 or 32 core graphic options with the ability to go up to 64 gigabytes in unified memory. And for those who don't know, it is a unified memory system which combines a GPU and CPU memory. And on the current models, you're able to go up to 16 gigs of unified memory, but 64 will just be crazy. As expected, there's also going to be no Intel CPU options on this new generation of MacBook Pro. And that was sort of expected after it was kind of known that the last iMac from 2020 was going to be the last Intel Apple computer. The base spec model of the MacBook Pro though is rumored to be 16 gigs paired with 512 gigs of internal storage, which is a pretty good starting point. 
So when it comes to the display, you kind of got a preview on the iPad Pro 13 inch that came out during the spring. And that is the mini LED panel, which has like great HDR support and can go up to a thousand nits as well as up to 16,000 nits in the proper optimized content. And from our test, I didn't really notice a huge difference in everyday use compared to the previous generation iPad, but with supported content and where the future is going, that is going to be huge. And with mini LED on paper, there are also a lot of other benefits, including deeper blacks and great contrast. No burn-in issues, improved wide color gamut, and just better dynamic range overall. But we have seen like a few things here and there with like color bleed and stuff on the mini LED. And with it being Apple's first product featuring that, we were expecting that maybe there might be a few things here and there that may or may not be fixed through software. The mini LED itself though is apparently thinner and also more power efficient. So that could contribute to the overall form factor of the new MacBook Pro. So with all these great computer offerings from Apple that are available at the moment and also ones that we're expecting to come very soon, you wanna be able to make the most of it from the productivity standpoint through applications. There are just so many great ones to choose from nowadays and you often don't wanna like pay a separate fee for every single one, but instead have a nice curated collection of apps that are very well reviewed and recommended for you to try out and see how it can enhance your workflow. Some of the programs that I have used include Gemini, which is able to scan your entire computer using smart algorithms to detect duplicate files, whether it is photos, videos, and documents. And as someone who has a ton of stuff on the main computer, this is definitely helpful to free up some additional room. As someone who also downloads a lot of YouTube videos to source in some of my own videos or even download one that I forgot to save on the computer, Downy is also a really good one that I'm able to just copy a link into and it will download in the highest resolution right away. This just makes everything very simple instead of having to go and find like a spammy website online that doesn't seem to download things properly. There's so many apps that you can choose from out there that let you do things on your Mac that you couldn't have thought of. These are all apps that you could find from Setup and I wanna give a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video and it is actually something that I've used for quite a long time now. They've curated a great collection of apps in many different categories and with a subscription of just $9.99 a month, you have access to using all of them. They really do help you unlock the potential of your computer and there are actually quite a few programs within the setup subscription that I already use on an everyday basis. So instead of having to pay for them individually, having them in the entire package really does pay for itself very quickly. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I have a one week free trial for you guys. Just make sure you check that link down below and also on screen. And once again, a huge thanks to setup for sponsoring the channel. We we're also expecting an updated webcam to 1080p and from the webcam that I've seen on the iMac 24 inch being 1080p paired with the M1 processor and the image signal processing and all that kind of stuff that comes together to optimize the image beyond the hardware, it is a really big improvement and I think that is something that we should expect to see. When it comes to pricing, I'm not really sure if it's going to be more money or it's gonna be around the same. The iPad did see a $100 price bump with a few additional features and everything so Personally, I don't really know, but I feel like if it was at the same price as the previous generation starting point, it will be very competitive. I think for those who have been waiting for a new MacBook Pro, you won't be disappointed because when Apple first announced the new M1 computers last year with the MacBook Air, the Pro, as well as the M1 Mac Mini, the one model that was like a little bit confusing was the MacBook Pro because it had the same processor as the MacBook Air, but it has like a fan and like thermals and stuff are gonna be better on the MacBook Pro compared to the MacBook Air, but People were just really expecting that Apple was going to update the MacBook Pro 14 and the 16 together this year because last year the 16 was kind of left the same and so for any creatives out there or people who demand a lot of power, you were kind of left hanging on the M1 portable laptop side. The M1X processor in summary does support more CPU cores, GPU cores, multiple extended monitor support and also greater power draw. Another product that also saw a big breakthrough in information though is the Mac Mini or the Pro model of that. And we are expecting a full redesign as well as the M1X processor, which will bring just a lot more power for anyone who's looking for a great desktop setup. So when Apple first announced the Mac Mini last year with the M1 processor, it was capped at the same specs of every other M1 computer. You either have the eight or 16 gigabyte unified memory option, and it was an eight core CPU and GPU at the max. As we just mentioned though, on the MacBook Pro, the M1X processor can support up to a 10 core CPU, which is eight high performance and two efficiency, as well as up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory or a 16 and 32 core option for the GPU, which when it comes to like graphics or like any high performance stuff, uh, people who program and also like photo edit in large batches, all these things are really going to come together. 
The higher end model of the new redesigned Mac Mini as well as the higher end MacBook Pro is also expected to have a more advanced neural engine. The biggest thing that I wasn't really expecting though was a redesign. And especially when you look at some of the rumors or the leaks out there with like the plexiglass design on the top, I feel like it looks kind of nostalgic because the old iMacs kind of had this design and the old Apple TVs had this look. And it feels like that is sort of the direction that Apple is sort of going back to in the recent times. Uh, you may have seen the iMac in the crazy colors, which I honestly wasn't expecting at all, but I feel like this one definitely looks quite clean, but a bit of a classic design than what we're used to. It is still gonna have like an aluminum closure on the side and it is expected to be a little bit thinner, but the plexiglass can contribute when it comes to like the wireless reception. It is gonna use the same magnetic power connector as we see on the iMac 24 inch. And it is also said that it's possible that the ethernet port is going to be built into the power brick, just like the one on the iMac, which I think is a pretty cool feature. We are expecting to see four Thunderbolt ports as well as two USB-A, the ethernet of course, and the HDMI. I think like four Thunderbolt ports is generally enough, but for like a power user, I feel like six would be even better. And I wouldn't really be surprised if they got rid of the USB type A ports, but it's still nice to have them. Just to wrap up the computer side though, even though we have talked about like the MacBook Pro as well as the Mac mini Pro update for 2021 being like higher end models with more power and performance, we actually haven't even gotten to the actual Pro line of products from Apple, including an updated iMac with like a 32 inch display or like some crazy specs like that as well as a desktop Mac Pro or like a mini Mac Pro looking computer that is said to have really, really powerful processors built in for graphics. I think that is to be expected later in the year and is said to not ship until 2022. But even with all these great improvements and the power that we're going to get and the likelihood of me switching over to it for video editing, um, I'm just super excited for what is going to come in their Pro specific models. The MacBook Air has also been talked about a lot lately, whether it's the crazy colors, the M2 processors, or even the fact that it may come out in 2022 or 2021 and how Apple's gonna name their lineup between the numbers and the X models. But it seems like they've kind of divided the lineup to the point where you have the iPad Air 4, which has a lot of the features of the Pro and the same form factor, but in the crazier color options with still a very powerful processor, as well as the iMac, which also comes in a lot of crazy colors minus the black option. The next generation MacBook Air redesign is expected to have white bezels, white keyboard, an M2 processor, and the exterior available in like a soft aluminum color scheme lineup, such as the iPad, and sort of to go in line with the unification of the iMac, the iPad, and the MacBook. As someone who currently uses the MacBook Air as my daily computer for work, and I really like the way it looks with like the black keyboard, it just looks like simple and professional like the rest of the lineup. I really hope that they do make one with like a black keyboard and a black bezel because I'm honestly not a big fan of like the white color scheme. So when it comes to the software set of things of WWDC, which is kind of like the main focus of this entire conference to start with, there are a few things that have been talked about for iOS, Mac OS, and iPad OS, but honestly, not as much information as the previous years before. And I'm really curious to hear what you guys think are features that are really missing in any of these platforms, because personally, even though there are a few complaints here and there, I don't really have any specific things on my wish list. And I feel like once again, they've kind of fixed some of the things over the last few years. We got the widgets and just everything's a little bit cleaner on the iPad, your calls no longer take up the entire thing. Um, um, and I feel like I've just been distracted by the M1 side of things because that has really been transformational in our workflow. There's rumors of like a new way to manage notifications because right now it is still a little bit messy at times. You can also set like different notification preference depending on current status, such as working, sleeping, or even custom categories. And there's also been rumors of setting automatic replies to messages depending on status. Apple's also really big on the privacy side of things. So they're trying to develop a feature that shows users which apps are currently silently collecting data about them. And it seems like Mac OS 12 is getting like a very incremental update, nothing crazy compared to last year, but I think the biggest category that we want to see a huge change in is an iPad OS. We've seen the amount of power that an iPad can have over the many years and the display technology being a little bit ahead of every other product on the lineup, the M1 processor making its way and showing that such a powerful chip is able to live on a tablet. 
all those things really come together and with like the Thunderbolt port and everything, I feel like the only thing we really need now is for iPad OS to feel more like a desktop experience that is also touch intuitive. Apple has completely destroyed the tablet market through its like native ecosystem of applications um, and a lot of other tablet offerings on the market are almost not exactly like tablet exclusive. They're able to work as like computers and like hybrids based on their form factor, but only Apple has been able to build like a very specific ecosystem of tablet apps. So I really hope that they're able to at least give you the option to run it in like a desktop mode and have it fully touch intuitive, use the pencil and full on applications, but also have the option to still use optimized iPad apps because they're very good. I wonder if that's a bit of a stretch, but that is all I can really think of in terms of software wishlist for Apple. Some of the other things that have also been talked about that are a little bit newer and we're expecting like later on in the year is the AirPods 3 as well as the Apple Watch 7. And it seems like the AirPods 3 are going to have like a bit of a hybrid design between the current AirPod 2s and also the AirPod Pros. It's not gonna have noise cancellation. It's said to have a few extra sensors for like fitness tracking and everything because it is a very popular product for that. And it is also said to have spatial audio features which Apple has put a lot of work into on all of their current products which features some support for like Dolby Atmos, uh, 5.1, 7.1, and all that kind of stuff. Even though I haven't had any issues in terms of AirPods getting water damage or during workouts and all that kind of stuff, and I haven't heard of any other people having those problems, the official IP rating on the AirPods compared to its competitors was also a little bit behind. And so it is said to have an IPX4 rating, and I'm going to put the definition of that on screen. Another very interesting thing that was also talked about though was new ear vents. So if you're wearing it for long periods of time, it just lets your ears breathe a little bit better, making it more comfortable. And I'm someone who definitely wears my AirPods for like very long stints. The only other product that has been talked about lately is the Apple Watch 7. And it seems like Apple's going to be going back to a flat design. And that seems to be a common thing throughout the entire lineup. I mean, the MacBook right now has like a curved or taper. That's going to be flat. And there is also the iPhone, which used to have the curved edge screen. And and that is also gonna be going flat as well. And it seemed like for a long time, people wanted the products to be more curved and more rounded, but it does seem like the early rumors are pointing towards a flat edge design. With that hopefully brings a larger display and smaller bezels, making it easier to touch and navigate and do more things from your wrist. And it is also said to improve on the health front of things, including a blood sugar and blood pressure sensor, which will be very helpful for people specifically with diabetes. It seems like on the health front, Apple has made large steps each year with the blood oxygen sensor last year, and it seems like it's become like a industry standard for health equipment for a lot of people out there. I mean, it's not gonna totally replace certain things, but just having all that power on your wrist and just like the focus from the ecosystem, app and support standpoint, it seems like that is Apple's continued focus moving forward. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what your favorite product or feature is that you're most excited for. And I'll see you all in the next one.